Hello Zero K fans, welcome to Nano Laser Dawn, and today we're gonna have the July 1v1 tournament. Oh, there here's the bracket. Here are all the players. First match we're gonna cast is Floris and Google Frog. Though there are a couple pretty good matches here right now. It overall I think is gonna be like Floris and Google Frog. I kinda wanna show it because Floris did kinda joke about how they wanted to play the game to show how much they don't actually know about the game. So I thought, why not showcase that? Or at least I don't know, just show them. So anyway, that will be the first one, but of course, tournaments go in a slightly awkward way, which means, there we go. Which means that we will end up probably just randomly jumping around depending on how long people take to do different matches. I mean, there's a couple of these that I'm fairly certain will take only about 10, 15 minutes, and others that will probably last for maybe even an hour. But yeah, the first round of the tournament's always a little bit wonky. However, everyone's here, I think, except Possibly Old Ghost Stalker. Actually, yeah, Old Ghost Stalker is not here as usual, unless they happen to have another name that I don't know about. But I don't think they do. So yeah, other than Old Ghost Stalker, it looks like everybody is here, which is particularly good turnout for a 16 per or 15 person tournament. Yeah, this is the tournament bracket for now. I, I don't know if I really want to call favorites. I mean, most people probably will already think of particular favorites. I mean, Goon, Google Frog, and Belthos are all kind of strong. But they are not the necessarily strongest players. Actually, I'm not really sure who my favorite is to win outright. In terms of Elo, I think Clone is the highest. Clone or Google Frog, one of the two. But it does feel like there are several contenders for first place. This should be good! Yeah, like I said, first off, we are going to have Floris versus Google Frog, and that is going to be apparently also streamed by Floris. Floris is going to do a first-person stream. I generally don't recommend this because, well, you can easily have people cheat, but hey, okay, I mean, if you want people to see what you're doing, then I suppose. I mean, generally, bat, like, don't stream snipe. I have this on a delay for that reason, and according to the user list, no one is. But, yeah, in general, don't stream snipe, but if you're streaming, expect that your opponent might stream snipe you. I mean, they probably won't, but it's like... That's... Like, you... Just bear that in mind. But I guess Loris figures that's not a big problem. I mean, they're against Google Frog. Google Frog's a pretty good person. They wouldn't probably do that. I say probably because I'm a paranoid and rather cynical person. But anyway, my possibly probably unfounded cynicism aside, we are going to be starting on Folsom Dam Final. As soon as Google Frog jumps in here, I'm not sure when that will be. I'm not even sure. Yeah, Google Frog, where are you? This is probably the biggest 1v1 tournament. What's the last one that was this big? I think the last one this big was a few months ago, so this is good. I'm glad to see that. It was actually kind of funny because for a little while it felt like there was only going to be about six or seven people in the tournament, and then all of a sudden everyone joins. I don't know if it was because I mentioned something in the last cast on Wednesday. It seemed like a bunch of people started jumping in after I mentioned, hey, there's a tournament. You guys should play in the tournament. And then a bunch of people signed up to play in the tournament. I hope that's not the case, because that would be terrifying. Like, as far as I'm concerned, I do not want to have that level of power. Like, people should be joining the tournament. Like, don't... Don't wait for me to tell you. Just... Just go and play. Maybe it's just because people don't necessarily know if it's gonna be the last Saturday of the month. I mean, in all but one case out of 19 so far, it's been the last Saturday of the month. So it's... It's the last Saturday of the month. That's just... That's not true. No, no, no. The first... The very, 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 very first one was on January 11th. So that's not always true. But that was in 2014. That was the very first of these tournaments. Alright, so we are about to get started. Looks like. Yeah, starting with the... Oh wait, not quarterfinals, round of 16. Starting with the round winner's round of 16. And this should be pretty good. Flores versus Google Frog on Folsom Dan final as soon as they... Hit start button.
Okay, Yogg-Sothoth in the tournament chat is calling Feldovs versus Klon and themselves versus Google Frog in round three in the semifinals, the winner semifinals. That'll be interesting. If that does happen, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Sure, let's see what happens. Well, first off, like I said, we're going to have Flores versus Google Frog, and this is double elimination, so it's not like you're going to go, oh, hey, if Flores loses, they'll jump into the chat. Pro or they'll jump into the stream broadcasting. I, uh, For those of you not familiar, I usually do the joint streaming with people like Flores or Kane or Sacktop. Oh, actually, I should have checked if Sacktop was here. They are not in chat in the game, so probably not. Okay. So, we have... Folsom Dam. This map, I have not ever really shown in 1v1. I think it's come up a couple times, but yeah, it's not... It's not a map that comes up a whole lot. And there's kind of a reason for that. Mostly it's just big. It's a, it's a team map. It's used pretty often as far as I know in teams. Yeah, as you can see, it does have... It has a bridge. Well, a dam. Sort of. That stretches across water. And basically, as you can see, it's... You have, I mean, players starting in the sides. The center, very, very, very center, is usually where people can test. Although, I think in 1v1, you probably will see a lot of hitting along the sides. The team games generally go along lanes principle, but in 1v1, because everything's open, I could see it being spread out along the north and south, because that center is such a choke point. I don't know. On the other hand, that's a lot of reclaim here. Like, 150 per each of these, and that's eight of them. So, overall, you're dealing with 1,200 metal of reclaim. I could see players going for that. I, however, expect that most players are going to be trying to get north or south. I'm curious if we're going to see it split evenly, like one person takes north, one person takes south, and then it's kind of funny at the fringes, or if it's cut straight in half. But either way, we're going to be seeing that as soon as the players actually choose where they where they're going to start. It's a good question where they're going to start. Probably going to both start in the center. I mean, it, it has... I mean, they have access to the center. It has the shortest rush distance. Floris is indeed starting it right in the center. Google Frog instead, however, starting in the northeast. Interesting choice. Did not expect that. Google Frog going for Cloaky while Floris goes for light vehicles. I... I've got to agree with Floris' choice. Although it looks like Google Frog is really trying to take the north side. They're trying to go down here... Deal with the fact that we are dealing with these more hilly paths. But at the same time, they're going across their side of the map, so I'm not sure what the motivation is for Cloaky. Interesting choice. They might be testing it. I mean, Google Frog, oftentimes when they're playing in tournaments, are they're testing things. Like they want to see how much they can push certain factories, or how much certain balance changes might be needed, or... I mean, Cloaky hasn't had any balance changes in a while. But they do like to test things. Now, I should clarify, Cloaky isn't bad, it's just this is a somewhat flatter map. So, light vehicles typically have an advantage on flat maps. However, on the other hand, the north side and south side are apparently totally in or nearly inaccessible to vehicles. This should probably be smoothed out, actually. I think this is probably something that go into spring, spring map, edit, and just smooth these areas out. Make sure vehicles can, in fact, path there. Because there's no reason vehicles shouldn't be able to path there. Especially just such a blotched out way. Actually, I think... My guess is that vehicles could path there, and then that got changed. That's what my guess is. Because right now, Google Frog is at a major advantage because they went for Cloaky. I didn't realize this. But apparently, yes. They are at a major advantage for the simple reason they can take the North and South. They don't have to worry about taking the North and South. They just go there. Flores can't actually go there. Maybe with darts, but not with Scorchers. That is a bit of an oversight, possibly due to an engine change. I don't know. I mean, this is a very old map. It might have been a change due to the engine. It might have been a change due to... I should double check. Yeah, this is completely impassable. This is probably meant to be vehicle passable. So I'm guessing that was a mistake. Or at least something that did work and now no longer works. And Flores at this point is going to find out the hard way that that's currently the case. Because this is about the farthest they can go. Well, that's unfortunate. I hate to have that happen. That, that's, that really does suck. The fact that the 
there's so much riding on that and the fact that you just can't send vehicles down there. In fact, is that symmetric? Not really. I mean, it would have been it would be a challenge to get a vehicle down on this side of the map, but Well, okay, never mind. No, it is more or less symmetric. Yeah, it's radially symmetric, but it is still symmetric. That is highly unfortunate. So Google Frog probably has this game. Looks like is Flores going to go for a massive rush? Because that's basically what they have to work with right now is a massive... It's just a rush along the center of the map. Hope for the best, because they cannot attack the north and south. Google Frog is going to be taking those expansions. Unless Flores switches over to gunships or, I suppose, planes really quick, gets some cranes, and then uses those to colonize the south and north sides of the map, then I could see that working out. But as it stands, Flores has this bridge, and that's it. Or the dam, rather. And that's it. And, of course, their side of the map. Now, that being said, given how much metal exists on just this side of the map right now, I mean, each of these is 1.6, and that's... Six. That 16 metal extractors right there... I mean, that's 26 metal that they can just work from. That's not a terrible amount of metal. So they're, like, once they get about plus 30 or so, then there's going to be a concern in terms of how much metal they can expand to. But Google Frog is still going to have an additional... It's going to still have an additional 18 metal extractors to work with, which is obviously a big deal. There are, yeah, 9 and in, 9 in the north, 9 in the south, 16 on each side. So, that is a problem. Should be 25 basically for each player, and that's... Well, okay, not quite, because obviously it'll be contentious since they hit the edges, but yeah, something like that. That will not work out. Although Floris... Okay, they got... No, they're not switching factories yet. Google Frog, on the other hand, I mean, they, they're they taking their side of the map. They're rapidly expanding. They're getting quite ahead of Floris at this point in terms of economy. Floris does have the center, and that's giving them a lot of leeway. But it looks like they are basically trying to push the center. Not rushing so much, just solid slow push. Or at least a slow push. I'm not sure how solid it'll be. Slashers are definitely a useful unit. But I don't know how well it's going to work out. Yeah, with Zeus... Google Frog basically going for the tanking. They just want to tank out everything. And for the air switch, which actually kind of makes sense in this map. And there's the gunship plant. So Flores just getting the gunship plant up. Google Frog has the air, air factory very nearly done. A few seconds left. That'll be up. And they are going to get Swifts and Ravens. Typical choices. Although, yeah, this Zeus is probably going to end up ending the game anyway. Like Flores... Oh no, it's not moving forward. Zeus... Wow, that Zeus getting a lot of free hits on it. Flores able to move forward. Google Frog, not sure why they... I guess they must have been focusing more on the production there. They were not focusing on that Zeus. Because I'm fairly certain the entire idea is, well, just tank through. But apparently no harm, no foul. And... One site to deal with this? Okay, that's... Okay, so this is a distraction. This is the real site. The one over to the south. <laughs> Good distraction, though. I mean, it's still going to be effective. It's just... Or... No, it's not. Never mind. What? No, it got stuck. Getting stuck and killed. That size gets one slasher. That was not worth it. That really wasn't worth it. That did not, in any sense of the word, make cost. But hey, it was a distraction, at least. Although, admittedly, not the best one. I mean, it distracted, but at the same time, now Floris knows, hey, size are a thing. Crap, I gotta prepare. I, not that they are. I mean, they're not sending darts anymore. They have one dart, but they aren't, like, patrolling around with darts to see, Oh, crap, maybe the side's already in my base. Maybe I'm going to lose everything right away. Nope. Nope, they aren't doing that at all. That's not happening. And it looks pretty... It looks like it'll be okay, though. I don't see the Go that Google Frog's going to deal that much damage. Actually, wait, no, I say that and I realize, no, they're going to go for this defender first. And then, oh, never mind. Hitting the dart, so Flores end up just having the dart in the right spot to begin with. Well, I guess that works. But yeah, that's the thing. If they go for the Lotus or the Defender first, then that will help. And Flores already just frantically setting up some Lotuses. They realize, oh crap, that Scythe is here. I need to deal with that. Not setting anything up to the north, though. So if Google Frog were to attack to the north with this, they would be able to get through. And decent reaction, rushing through. Ah, not able to get through without being detected, but doesn't matter, that Lotus is going to die. Is that Scorch going to do anything? Eventually, yes. 
This, I mean, Google Frog is already 56 to 34. At this point, Google Frog already has the economic advantage just because of that north and south. Flores has almost completely taken the western side that they actually can take. That's all they have to work with. Like I said, they can't take the north and south without, without terraforming, I, I should mention. Or without using cranes. They could use cranes, that would actually do the trick. They could also terraform this ramp to actually be a proper ramp. Also an option. But I don't know if they're gonna do either of those things. It doesn't appear that they have any real intention to. Instead, Cloakybot Switch. Going for the factory switch. Or at least adding for assist constructors. Probably realized this. I mean, sure, Flores has realized by now what's happening. Oh, Scotty pointing out that what's likely happening with this is that, although I haven't seen any ticks built yet, there has been some discussion about whether or not ticks are a viable component of the Cloakybot factory or if they need buffing. Now, we are not playing on the latest dev version or anything. The absolute bleeding edge changes are that ticks actually have an increase in sight range. Their sight range has been increased by like one and a half times what it was before. It's got from 160 to 240. Which, I mean, that'll help. The main issue they were having was their range is kind of low, like their explosion radius is kind of low, which means that they don't end up it's hard for them to get into position and then explode and then stun. But that's kind of the point. But I don't know. Google Frog not testing them out. Instead, going for Zeus and just punching through. Like, playing Cloaky as you would, well, play Cloaky. Take the north and south and then punch, I mean, against vehicles at least. But yeah, punching through this is perfectly sensible. However, against vehicles, especially when your opponent is going so heavily for slashers, why would you go for ticks? You don't need to. If they're going heavy scorcher, then yeah, that would make tons of sense. But Heavy Slasher? No, not at all. And Trident's, what the heck? Yeah, the center being taken out. Google Frog, I think, is probably just going to win right now. And hey, Tick's coming in for Flora, so someone's testing them. Someone is indeed testing them. But that, like I said, that was bleeding edge changes. These Ticks have this, have still the 160 sight range. That, that is their sight range right now, 160 Elmo. That is it. It's not 240 yet. So I'm not sure if Floris realizes this, or if they're even thinking about it. Or they're just going, oh crap, I'm getting hit by a bunch of units, I want to stop them. Now, I mean, I personally think that ticks are probably okay. It's just a matter of making sure that you use them as a trap. Like, you can't jump, you can't rush them in, especially against pyros, which is where they're kind of being used. Glaive and tick versus jumpbot factory is pretty much what people are trying to do, because Zeus gets taken out by moderators. So people are trying to see how much Aquan in particular, trying to see how much Tick and Tick and Glaive can deal with Jumpbot Factory. And the answer is with some difficulty because Ticks don't deal a whole lot of damage. Stunning up Pyros is difficult. So I'd say at this point, it's, I don't know, it might be a four-six matchup for Jump for Cloaky, like in favor of Jumpbots. At this point, though, it's kind of irrelevant. We are switching over to the Mirror, or at least partial Mirror. I mean, the obvious thing is these ticks are going to be used for the slashers. Like, they're going to go off, stun the Zeus, and the slashers will come in and just rip apart the Zeus after they run into the trap. Now, whether or not Google Frog realizes this trap exists, I don't know. My guess is they probably suspect it, but they, I don't think they know. Hmm. Okay, there we go. There is the constructor going down south. Floor is coming into the south with some constructors while tr not ripping apart everything. Ripping apart some things, but... Wait, how did this get down here? Oh, okay. So apparently the south ramp and the northeast ramp can just barely support vehicles going down them and possibly up them. And I mean just barely. You see the leveler is stuck and these constructors for some reason are stuck with them. There's no reason for that. Maybe a pathing cache thing or something. Well, at any rate... This is going to be actually surprisingly useful for Flores. They are going to be able to go up this ramp, though. This ramp is inaccessible. That, like I said, south, oops, southeast and northwest. That's what's accessible. This south, oh, sorry, southwest and northeast. Southwest, north, southwest and northeast. Southeast is probably going to have a heart. It's probably not going to work. And of course, Google Frog would go for the Dante because at this point, I mean, Google Frog is what plus yeah plus sixty, almost plus seventy. And Tick Trap has gone off. First Tick Trap goes off, and a bunch of other ones going off. There we go, stunning out the Zeus. 
And that's what they want. And, ooh, nice army in place, too. Nice turnaround. Good tick traps from Floris. Really well done. Unfortunately, the slashes are getting pushed around way too much. That is, I, I'm gonna die. As, no, not gonna die as a result. That was a nice reduction. However, Floris is still gonna have to get enough of an economy to deal with that later on because that was, yeah, that was a huge reduction. But at the same time, you're still dealing with a lot of units being. Actually, that's a lot of units being killed. Holy crap! Floris, I think, just about equalized army values just with that attack alone. And since a lot of the army value right now is contained in the Dante, Flores is actually more powerful over in the center in terms of cost. In terms of army value by cost, Flores has the advantage in the center. Unfortunately, they'll only have that for about five seconds. And then the Stinger comes in. Stinger coming in at the Stardust dies. This is actually really good for Flores. Really good timing there. Because they can just rush this now. The Glaives can just rush this. Don't have to worry about Stardust. Oh, that sucks the Slashers died, but still. Yeah, Glaives can just rush in. And now another, well, Funnel Up coming in, because why not go for, go for pretty much the most expensive Practical Strider for this stage of the game. And Dante being dropped in. So now the Force is contrary. Now Google Fuck has it in the right spot. Although, ooh, that's a lot of damage. Like 30% damage just off that drop. That's 3,000 health. Unfortunately, not much here to deal with it, but... Ooh, ouch. Yeah, those glaives did not manage to do very much at all. Still, if that goes down, that could be a big deal. On the other hand, Funnelweb is up. Funnelweb's not in position. It'll probably be... Is there another transport coming in? Nope, looks like it's just gonna walk. It is going to walk. So now we have a bit of a stalemate. Or at least, a bit of an impasse. Neither player can really deal with the others at this point. Google Frog looks like they're going for... What? Okay, is this a warrior drop? Can't tell. They are going for what looks like... Oops, come on. Ah! Whatever. Looks like it is, in fact, a warrior drop. No, never mind, a rector drop. My mistake. Hard to tell. But yeah, that... No, they are, in fact, going for a reclaim drop. I forget it. I'm going to reclaim. I'm going to stop your airiness from doing anything here. That's what Google Frog's doing. And Floris is just stuck. They kind of have the south. They're kind of stuck trying to take the south. But they pretty much have it. At this point, it should split up relatively evenly. But this reclaim, that is going to be a big deal. At this point, like Google Frog's... How much reclaim are they dealing with here? They're dealing with about... 3,000 reclaim. So that's... Actually, no, no, no. Let's let's go by range. 2,000 reclaim. Still impressive. Flores making sure they can't get all of it, but... And south... South is going to Flores, pretty much. Cleared it out. So at this point, the economies are evening out, but this set of caretakers is going to be a problem. Mostly for the reclaim. Hey, Goofy, moving in for what looks like what might be their final attack. Hello, Dante from Flores. Nope, that they're kind of saying no. They aren't going to allow that that easily. This could go on for a little while, folks. I did mention before that there are going to be some matches that are lasting 15 minutes, and I mean whole rounds. Well, whole like sets, and others that are probably going to last closer to an hour. This one's already been 16 minutes, so don't. Be too concerned, it might take a little while. Folsom Dam is also a bit of a, a larger map, and I mentioned before there's the choke point in the center, which is exactly where everyone's fighting. Because that's where everyone always fights in this map. It's always this choke point in the center. That's where everything comes in. Ah, well. Both strategies coming in here, so at this point, Floris about to... Is that Floris's? Yeah, that's Floris's. Floris is Dante down. So, did... Google Frog lost their Dante too, didn't they? Yeah, it looks like it. Both Dante's down. Funnel Web's still up, but that Funnel Web, it's, a, it's entirely based on its drones. Still gonna be a problem, but at this point, Floris is so far behind, and looks like a couple of Infernos coming into Floris' base that should burn out everything. Missing the wind generators, but hitting all of the caretakers. That hit the wind generators, that would have been huge. I mean, at this point, Flores is already nearly accessing. But 
down go all the caretakers. Ouch. That is a lot of damage to build power. Floris forced to excess. There is not much they can do at this point. Nice shots over to the south side of the map, though. Should be able to take out that Lotus. Should be able to take out most of the south side of the map, in fact. These six glaives. These could be the hero glaives. I mean, it'll have. they'll have to get rid of the funnel web, though. That will have to go first. And that... That brawler doing a pretty good job. How are the hero glaives doing? The hero glaives doing terribly because rapiers have been built and that is going to deal with everything. That is going to wreck everything. Oh, right. I forgot to mention I have stream. I should probably mention I have stream. I mean, for the people who aren't watching the stream, obviously. People who are watching the stream, you know this is a stream, I'm assuming. I always forget something. But what I don't forget is that at this point, Flores is way behind. Three times army value. That is a pretty big deal. They're doing a lot of they're doing a lot of moves around the map though, trying to make just trying to limit as much as possible what Flores has to deal with. But there's only so much they could do. Still a nice Dante's. Ouch. Oh, yeah, it looks like another Inferno had hit the wind generators. Another one hitting the Strider Hub. I mean, that that Vulture just showing everything Google Frog needed to know about where to fire. Now, is it going to be only Infernos? It looks like it. Google Frog going purely for Infernos, not going for, like, double AOs to deal with the factory. Just Infernos. Burn everything out gradually. I mean, burn everything out gradually with a lot of missiles over time. Don't allow any real repairs, but still, that's... Big problem, energy. And Floris realizes that that is game one to Google Frog, as Floris loses the last of their wind generators. Well, actually they lost everything now because they blew up. I can't really verify what I just said. Probably someone in the stream or someone in YouTube will point out that they had not in fact lost all of their wind generators, but they lost that entire field. They were at like 50, 50 metal, 20 energy. That's not good. Energy being your major bottleneck is not something you want. I mean, even for most of that game, Google Frog had... Actually, Google Frog had less energy than metal. Never mind. I was about to say... Google Frog had pretty healthy energy economy compared to Floris's. They had more energy compared to Floris, but they also had more metal, so I don't know how healthy it was. But we are going to be moving on. I don't know to which map, because that is up to Floris. I don't know where Floris wants to go. They probably, knowing them, might want to go to something like Hide and Seek, because they made that map. Or... I don't know where else they'd want to go. There are a lot of pretty decent choices. There are a lot of choices, in fact, so that's why I can't easily guess. But they would probably go for a smaller map, just not to deal with the economy play. Mind you, a big problem in that game, I mean, the entire time I mentioned from the start, the light vehicle factory cannot path on these ramps, or at least not the northwest and southeast ramps. The southeast and northwest ramps, they can barely, some of them can. I don't know if Masons can. And it looks like Flores is just jumping around randomly. That is how they're going to be playing this. But we'll see how that... We'll see what they settle on. Well, Battle for Planet 17 seems like what they want to deal with right now. So we might be playing on that one. Not sure. But either way, we are on to game two. And are we playing this map? We want to know, are we playing Battle for Planet 17? No, we are playing map... No. No. Not sure what that would be offhand. I don't think there's one called No Man's Land or, or anything like that, but there might be. Oh, never mind. Flores was trying to actually say no and map at the same time. No. Okay, what are they... Are you going to pick or not, Flores? Okay, whatever. We're waiting on that map.
Okay, where are we going? Are we going to pl battle pl battle for Planet 17 or not? I think at this point we're going to be... Desert Plateaus! Okay, that is where we're going to be. I am a little bit surprised, but not terribly. I mean, Floris probably is fairly confident they can run the Econ game. I mean, they... They have plenty of experience doing Econ-style play, so it's not like it's necessarily a bad idea. Desert Plateaus actually is a little bit weird when it comes to Econ play, and I I can kind of see maybe that's why Flores is going for it, because it's tricky to hold a lot of economy, so they're probably assuming that they're just going to be able to harass around if they can't win in the Econ play. If they can't win the long game. But they might be able to. We'll see what happens. Anyway, also should point out what's currently happening for... So Silent Shadow... Oh, apparently... Stewart didn't show up? But Stuart was here. No, apparently Stuart was not here, and Aquadim has lost 2-0 to Yogg'Sadoth. Man, yeah, looks like it. Silent Shadow and Old Ghost Stalker are not here, and Yurga beats Exploit. So Yurga and Yogg'Sadoth, that... Well, we're watching Floris and Google Frog, but that would be a pretty cool match, too. Well, I... I mentioned before, I don't really care about what's being done. I usually end up following a particular player just because that's what ends up happening. But I don't really care too much. Like, don't wait for me. The only things I care about are winners finals, losers finals, and grand finals, and those block the entire tournament. So, actually, this is losers finals. Those block the entire tournament, so that is something that will just happen. Like, naturally, I have to cast those because there's nothing else to cast in the meantime. Oh, never mind. Wanderlust. I was mistaken about the map. Oh, yeah. For those of you watching the stream, I should let you know what's going on. So that is going to be... Okay, there we go. We are playing on Wanderlust. That is actually what's happening. We're not just guessing at this point. We are, in fact, playing on Wanderlust. That is going to be the map. And that is going to be starting up as soon as the game loads, which might take a little while. Usually no more than 20 or 30 seconds. I'm actually not sure why it takes so long for me to load. I don't know if it's supposed to take this long. I don't have my operating system on an SSD. I have an SSD for videos. I have an SSD for some of the games that I want to have loading really quick. But 0K is not on there because it's not the most portable of games. Might be nowadays, though, actually. I might want to try that. Shifting that over. That would help a great deal. Although it might also cause problems because then I'm streaming to and re and writing to or sorry, reading from and writing to the same drive when doing streaming. That's not been a problem in the past though. Anyway, that being said, we are gonna be moving on to game two. So Wanderlust, also not surprising, also apparently one of Floris' maps. And it is a bit of a smaller map. I don't know if Floris is going to go for a cheese play. I could see them doing so, but... I don't know. Anyway... Oh, the music on for now. Anyway, it is going to be... It's going to be here. So yeah, this map... It's a fairly small map, and we're seeing Google Frog starting in the center. Players will usually start in the north or center, or south, southeast, northwest, or centers. Floris looks like they're going to start in the center as well, so both players going in the center, both players have set up, and let's begin. And Cloaky for both sides, Cloaky Mirror right off the bat, no spiders, no jump bots, nothing super fancy, just Cloaky Block Factory for both sides. And Google Frog possibly being a bit more aggressive. Yeah, definitely, Floris only going for the one scout, Google Frog going for a couple glaives, so Floris is going to have to deal with that. That first glaive shouldn't be a problem. It'll probably be a relatively even... Although, on the other hand, if the two get in, that's going to be a problem. But yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, it's not even going to happen. Nope, that glaive's going past. But Google Frog being much more belligerent right at the start. Floris, they don't have any defenses right up. They do have a couple glaives, but they're out of position. These, this early glaive could be a problem. And Floris will be losing this glaive to the commander as soon as it gets here. And... First blood goes to Google Frog. 
winning that initial Glaive Micro War, but giving Floris the medal. Obviously, I mean, that's going to happen. And now Floris with their own medal donation. Oh, no, never mind. They are, in fact, going to avoid Google Frog's commander and avoid that... Oh, not quite avoid it. Wow. Never mind. Yes, indeed avoid the defender. Have it blow up its wind generator. So at this point, nice start. At this point, Google Frog actually is slightly behind in terms of economy. Flores has pulled ahead just slightly. Ever so slightly. But what it's going to come down to, and this is the thing that Google Frog usually does really well, is the constant expansion. And Google Frog is probably going to be able to just rebuild that expand from there faster than Google Frog, faster than, sorry, Floris is. Floris at this point isn't even, they've, they're idling a conjurer. They can't easily expand either. There's nowhere they can easily trivially go, whereas Google Frog's already expanded to the northwest. Like, Google Frog's already more than made up for what they just lost. Good harassment, but it's kind of tricky. That's always the hard part when it comes to dealing with basically the early game in general, especially with someone like Google Frog who just expands constantly. Is trying to deal with the fact that they are going to be expanding constantly. If you raid them out, that's good. It buys you time, but it's also something that kind of keeps you even. Like, on par. So yeah, Google Frog's totally caught up now. In fact, they've surpassed. So, Flores is slightly behind, but they have... They've opened up an expansion point. They also don't seem to care. Their Conjurer, a little bit behind. There we go. So, at this point, it should even out relatively quickly. I am a bit curious if Google Frog is going to try out Ticks in this matchup. I'm a little bit curious. I mean, we saw them used to great effect last game, actually, that blocked out that entire Zeus attack last game. I'm curious if they're going to be used in this game just because this is a cloaky mirror. And, of course, mirror matches are always... I mean, it's good to test for depth, but you can't really test for faction or factory balance because it's the same factory. But it looks like we are indeed going to see a couple ticks because, well, they're good units. I mean, Google Frog knows how to use them well. Apparently, that was... According to Google Frog, that was the reason they were nerfed in the first place is because Google Frog was able to use them too... Like, they were... They just found them too trivial. Like, they could just do whatever they wanted with them. And that... Speaking of which, there goes that tick, stunning out every... Oh, not quite. That warrior is going to be a problem. But still, Floris losing a few units. Getting even up on economy, though. So at least they are not going to be too far behind. Actually, yeah, they're expanding pretty quick. Taking the northeast, taking the southwest. Google Frog hasn't taken the southeast yet. Sorry, southwest, sorry. Northeast, north... It's east. North and south on Flores' side. Google Frog has not taken their south expansions yet. They've taken the north ones. But not the south ones. Which is rather surprising. And Google Frog... Well, they should be able to defend this no problem. South side... Google Frog has just been play, placing glaives. They know exactly where Floris has been setting up. But they've been placing glaives always in front of where Floris wants to expand and just delaying those expansions by seconds at a time each time. A bit surprisingly, Google Frog is actually behind militarily despite that. Probably because those warriors are doing a fine job of dealing with the glaives. So it's just, it's reducing Google Frog's army faster than they'd like it to. I mean, these, there's going to be three glaive deaths right here. And then, yeah, the rest retreat. That, like I said, it's small things like that. Floris is actually getting a bit of a military advantage. In terms of glaives, I don't know how evenly split it is. Because that was a terrible way of trying to find out. Better way to try to find out would be to do this. Okay, Floris has 12 and there was like 23 glaives that were... That had total, so yeah. It's even split on glaives, and Floris has warriors on top of that. Google Frog does have the Rockos, though. Which... Basically counter warriors, but then the glaives counter the Rockos, so it's going to come down to usage. It's going to come down so much to usage. Floris on the harassment trail, not able to get the southwest because there's nothing there. Google Frog has yet to expand to the southwest. They've focused much more on the center. Pulling ahead thanks to Reclaim more than anything. Yeah, Google Frog... Oh, and the fact that this is a plus three metal extractor right in the center. That helps a ton, too. No one's taking the north or south, though. I'm very surprised. Like, the north and south side, that's usually taken very quickly, but neither player taking it. Google Frog will likely focus on that as soon as they deal with these... Well, this force right here. Floris, not yet taking the south either. They do have a defensive force. They do see the Google Frog is coming. Gonna be attacking along here. Like, gonna be hitting up here, and they're also gonna be hitting... Oh, no, they're not gonna hit from the north. They're gonna hit from the west, maybe? 
No, they're regrouping to that to the side northwest of this expansion, so they are not running up this ramp. Well, this cliffside. That's surprising. That's a really good attack vector. And Floris is going to demonstrate as much, although there's still nothing to attack. Google Frog is yet to expand there. But hey, it's a demonstration. I mean, it, it exists. You can path along it. That's the thing. But yeah, it's worth pointing out that Floris' glaives are basically out of position defensively. They cannot be here to deal with the Rocco's. So the Rocco, the anti-Rocco right now is the Rocco. That's all there really is to deal with Rocco's. Wow, six more glaives just running to their deaths. These warriors have been doing a wonderful job for Floris. And they've been keeping them ahead. They've been just keeping them in a really healthy position. Oh, hello, the cred. Welcome to Zero K. This is a game based on Total Annihilation, which is itself... Well, actually, it's a pretty original game. But it's a game based on Total Annihilation, which, if you played it before, that's great. If you haven't, then basically it's mainly focused around slightly large... Well, lar Total Annihilation is focused around larger army tactics and a lot of base building, and as you can see, a lot of territory control, which you mentioned in the chat. You've played Dawn of War games, which follow a similar territory control model, though, admittedly, there's no capturing it. You're basically just placing listening posts. So, yeah, for... Since you're not familiar with the resource model, possibly, these metal extractors are like listening posts. Actually, they're like the flag itself. But they're kind of like listening posts in that they also just... You're, it's construction you have to build on top of it. And then you have power plants, which work very much like the ones in Zero in Dawn of War. Main difference, however, is that the, the spending is also gradual, but you aren't going to notice that right now. It'll make a bit more sense if, as you can see, some assist building going on. But yeah, this is actually going to look pretty familiar, I think. If you're a Dawn of War player, the way this plays out should seem kind of familiar. There are no activated abilities, or like a couple activated abilities. So that's one thing. It's pretty much, it's almost entirely based off of unit physics. Like all the projectiles are dodgeable, everything's simulated, and all the units are made. Like the, the reason Warrior works well against Glaive is because Glaives are weak and Warriors have a bit of a wide spread in their attack. So that is a huge deal. But anyway, thank you for joining us, Thikred, and yeah, please feel free to watch. If there's anything, any questions, let me know. This is on a two-minute delay, so it'll be a little while before the explanation gets to you. But back to the game itself, Google Frog nicely harassing the Northeast. And... Oh, interesting. Okay, so Skazi pointing out that Google Frog's probably not taking the south side of the map because, at least in 2v2, if you take north-south, it makes it harder to help out. And they're assuming the effect in 1v1 is larger. Now, I don't totally agree. I mean, there is a bit of an issue where you're stretching yourself out. But at the same time, you... I mean, you kind of have to at some point. Now, doing it early on may be a bad idea, but yeah, I'm still surprised Google Frog has yet to expand down here. That's a lot of metal that they are not taking right now. Whereas Flores has taken the metal, they are actually ahead economically, and that's with the harassment that just happened. A little surprised they aren't rebuilding, though. But yeah, it comes down to how you set up defenses. Like, in 1v1, you just have to set up a few more defenses to make sure that you don't get hit when you're on the offensive. That you don't get hit from behind. And that warrior was a bit of a waste. Really walking into lotuses. Three warriors doing that would have been the end of those lotuses, but one warrior is not enough. Oh, Skazi, quit, wait, quit whining about people distracting me. I, I, like, I like explaining this. I mean, I like it when I see this new people who haven't ever seen this game before going, Hey, what's this? And then I tell them. And hopefully they stay and watch. Because I like having new people play. Also, to be fair, I started talking about Dawn of War and there wasn't a whole lot happening. But now there is a whole lot happening. The center is becoming quite contested. Nice use of hammers there. This... This is starting to crack open Flores, although really, Flores' weak spot is right here. No stack defense along here, no units really along here. They... They're just sending scouting warriors. Why are they sending scouting warriors? They should send... I mean, I can sort of see why they're sending scouting warriors. I just think they probably should be sending scouting glaives. Incidentally, at this point, Google Frog... Google Frog's well aware of this. They have radar coverage over here. They know Flores is trying to set up in their side of the map. Flores, on the other hand, what do they know right now? They basically know nothing about Google Frog's base. They know something about the center. They can probably infer that these are glaives. But yeah, they don't know a whole lot. So Google Frog is actually considerably better informed than Flores is, 
I think Google Frog might actually have... Yeah, they just about, as you see, the radar here is a little bit faint, but the radar edge, that's basically the entirety of the map. Only the very, very, very southeast is not visible to Google Frog right now. And why spiders? Because crab. That's why. Because crab is a wonderful siege breaker unit. Or actually, a wonderful siege unit. Not so much siege breaker, but definitely a wonderful siege unit. And is that... Yeah, Venom. Also Venoms, because they're a wonderful anti-glaive unit. Stunning them out and stopping them from doing anything. Like, one shot of a Venom does stun out a glaive. And now Google Frog goes to the southwest. And Floris is still ahead of... Uh, militarily, my goodness. Nearly 9,000 metal invested in their army. Compared to Google Frog's 5,000. I mean, attrition has been really going in Floris' favor this whole game. This entire game, Floris has been doing a great job... Relatively speaking, keeping our units alive. The the few glaives and warriors notwithstanding, for the most part, it's been working out just fine. And lightning versus lightning, Zeus wins. The god of lightning wins. Well, oh, god of thunder, I guess. Lightning counts too. And this is where, yeah, three warriors coming in, that's going to help get rid of the lotuses. Wow, who frog? I think I'm going to lose the thing. I don't know, the crab should be able to get in place, that should be able to deal with this and essentially be non-dislodgeable. But is, I don't think Floris is going to care. I mean, they're spreading out the units quite a lot too, they're not going to have to worry about splash damage. And then of course the center, that's... Okay, that's pretty even. Okay, is Google Frog going to be able to do much here? I think... I think so, I think they still have a pretty good position. That crab is providing some support, but yeah, this is going to be... I think a Pyrrhic, this is going to be a Pyrrhic victory for Floris. The center, however, pushing back Google Frog. Now, Pyrrhic victories in this game are not the best idea, of course, because of Reclaim. Yeah, for Thakred, that is a bit of a difference. There is Reclaim as a mechanic. That is a thing. Probably dropped the volume slightly. Yeah, Reclaim is a mechanic. It's a mechanic that basically gives you metal. This is happening right now. You get metal. Works can basically re they get racks, any wrecks, they can just take them and becomes part of your income. And that is that's something for, that's a reason to avoid Pyrrhic victories, but at the same time, there's always the need you need to hit them. You need to hit your opponent because otherwise they're gonna just grow out of control. Also, if you can't hit them, then do so. But at this point, yeah, the the army counts have evened out. The army counts have evened out, the economy's pretty even. Floris' old attrition I mean their attrition advantage has kind of gone away. Because they, I mean, they hit a lot of defenses. They just hit this massive wall of lotuses. I think if they had focused everything down, if they would focused everything in the south ramp, they would probably be breaking through, kill the factory at least once. Possibly both factories would have died. And, well, hey, Google Frog lost their commander. At least that's something. That should help a bit. What other builders are out here? Are there no builders out here? M, 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 M. No, no, there are no builders out here at all. Yeah, I know it's a sideways E, but it looks like an M. It, it's an M. So yeah, no no constructors here. This this front line is actually fairly vulnerable. The caretaker will help repair, but there's nothing to rebuild. Not until any of these or conjurers come in here. But at this point, I don't know how likely that is to happen. And here comes... Okay, now Floris knows, of course, they can concentrate on that south side of the map. I mean, they hit both the south and the what, you would say, south and eastern side of Google Frog's base. They know that south is vulnerable. Taking full advantage of that. Unfortunately, not leaving their forces together. One Zeus... Get, two Zeus is getting out of position. That is not what you want to have happen. Google Frog just taking full advantage of that while at the same time her assaulting very heavily along the southeast. I don't think we're going to have a base trade situation. I mean, Google Frog clearly getting a much, much bigger hit as a result of this. But still... This, I think, is going to be another Pyrrhic victory. If not even a vic if it's even a victory for Floris. No, it doesn't even look like a victory is likely. Looks like Floris is actually falling behind now. Or, well, yeah, probably. I should also point out that Floris is actually accessing at this point. This, oh yeah, there we go. Floris throws in the towel because they just threw away their entire army. Google Frog throwing up that Stardust at the last second. That was... That was a good move, throwing the Stardust up. But yeah, at that point, I mean, Floris was basically on par because their good attrition in the early game gave them a large enough army to deal with the fact that their micro is probably not as good as Google... Well, it wouldn't be as good as Google Frogs. 
and they haven't played as much, so but they had that advantage early on, and that was helping them a lot. It's quite impressed, honestly. They did they did a good job there, keeping their army alive and generally just keeping pretty much on par with Google Frog the entire time. Unfortunately, just that one shot in there where it didn't have quite a large enough army. I mean, when I, what I said before was more like at that time with the army they had. With what they pushed in, Google Frog had enough time to prepare. That's the thing. Google Frog was able to prepare that time around, and so the south side is much less vulnerable. But, I mean, I didn't quite call it when it came up. However, that was the game. That is actually the match, though. Google Frog wins 2 0. We are going to be. Going to be seeing somebody else. Possibly Google Frog versus Lord Muff. I'm not sure about the Clone Forever and Honu Kane games. Those are going to be starting up. Okay, Felthos apparently beat Silent Shadow. Akinem has beaten Exploit. So Akinem moves on, Exploit has been eliminated. And... Other than that, it doesn't look like Honu Kane or Clone Forever matches are going to end anytime soon. They're, yes, they are indeed currently going on. Wow, Forever is really giving Clone a run for their money, apparently. 15 minutes on Red Comet, after presumably half an hour, no, not half an hour, presumably another 15 minute game on Folsom Dam. I mean, Forever is pretty good, so yeah. Just Clone is definitely near my favorite, if not my favorite, to win. But apparently Forever's given them a run for their money, which is pretty impressive to see. And yeah, that's also true of Kane and Honu, and I don't know if I want to watch whoever wins being Kane and Honu versus whoever wins being Clone and Forever. Or for someone to watch Google Frog versus Lord Muff. Hey, Yurga and Yogstoth. Ooh, that would be cool. Actually, that would be really cool. I don't know where Yurga is, though. That I would like to see, though. Okay, so we're going to be, we're going to be watching, okay, that's actually true, I don't know whether or not it's, like, if it's game one or game two, I was actually assuming, I mean, it's probably game two, but I don't know who's won, I don't actually know what the scores here are. Yes, Google Frog won, the, oh yeah, I should probably point that out in chat, because I can't actually, two minute delay, hooray! Alright, so we are going to be moving on to, I guess, semifinals match. Looks like Jurga versus Yogsdoth. I they didn't apparently realize that the that their game was up. Please, if you're in the tournament, pay attention to this bracket page. For goodness sakes, get this bracket page up in your browser, have it in a second monitor or something. Just keep it available. Keep it readily available so you know exactly what's going on. Because I mean, I appreciate that I'm able to watch this match. But at the same time, I did say before. Don't wait for me. Please don't wait for me. 